What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday, and welcome to your Denver Broncos AMA, brought to you by Mile High Sports. Kim Becker, along with Cody Rourke, here to discuss everything Denver Broncos. I know it's the offseason, but obviously a lot of stuff still going on. A lot of rumors in the works here, of course, when it comes to the head coaching position. We'll talk about free agency a little bit, Cody, but we'll start with the biggest question here and one that was sent in. When do you think the Denver Broncos will make a decision on head coach? Well, you know, first off, I'd like to open up this AMA by saying, you know, for the true fan, there is never an offseason. We'll have you covered every step of the way, every single day, milehighsports.com. We'll have you covered with some video features as well. Myself, Kim Pecker. So make sure you're plugged into all things MHS as you navigate this offseason of free agency. And now, yes, to uh, to the question that was asked, when do you think the Broncos will hire their next head coach? I honestly, Kim. I have a hunch and a feeling it's going to be Monday. I think we're going to get an announcement Monday morning. That's what I think. And the reason I feel this way, obviously the Broncos have done interviews this week. Yesterday they wrapped up with Sean Payton. Now on Thursday they'll have one with the Miko Ryans. Friday they'll close things out with Dan Quinn. They also interviewed Raheem Morris on Tuesday as well in Los Angeles. So I imagine that George Payton, um, Greg Penner, and Condoleezza Rice will – more than likely, to my estimation, I think I think they're going to be in San Francisco because the Cowboys will have to travel to take on the 49ers. And ironically, two of the other people, the remaining candidates that they're interviewing for the head coaching job, are coaching against each other this week. So I, I imagine they're going to go through, conclude those interviews on Friday. And then after that, they'll probably consult on the on the plane ride home. They'll meet again with uh, the large contingency, everybody else in Broncos ownership. They'll discuss the options, and then they'll move forward. Now, let's say Sean Payton is the head coach for the Broncos, right? Because I think right now that's the favorite on paper for a lot of people. The Broncos cannot, in their, in their meeting and interview that they had on Tuesday, they are not allowed to negotiate any kind of deal, any kind of contract. What would happen is the Broncos would reach out to the Saints and say, hey, we want Sean Payton to be our next head coach. What is the compensation? The Saints will then go back to Sean Payton and say, they want to trade for you. Are you okay with this? Because ultimately, Sean Payton has final say in this. So for him, if he says yes, then then they would agree to terms. And then after the Broncos trade for him, obviously the, the trade wouldn't go through and be official to the new league year, which is March 15th. At that point, throughout that time, the Broncos and Sean Payton, after the tra- trade is agreed upon, they can negotiate a deal, and then everything can kind of work its way out when the new league year rolls around. Outside of that, I mean – Realistically speaking, if the Broncos want to hire a coach that is not currently under contract of another team, they're certainly able to do it. Those candidates would be a zero ever who's already in-house. Uh, Jim Caldwell and David Shaw at this point. Everybody else, so obviously, they're still ongoing in their season. So I expect Monday an announcement to be made and more than likely an introductory press conference on Tuesday or Wednesday next week. That is my official prediction. Do you think Ejiro Evero has a chance to be the Denver Broncos head coach? I mean, I think that there's a chance. It, you know, I think the thing that's hard for me right now, and look, I've, I've talked to a lot of players in the locker room about Evero, and they believe he'd be a fantastic head coach. He's got strong leadership qualities and traits, uh, gets to know their families away from football, which I think is always an important thing. But also the one thing that was told to me is he knows how to flip the switch. You know, he's not like this, I'm best friends with my players type approach. He's business. He's all business. And He also understands when to, you know, connect with his players, which I think is important. He's collaborative and and allows his players to have a voice at the table, which I think is important. It's all about balance, right? For me, the hesitation would be if anything that goes against him is the fact that he was just a first year defensive coordinator. Now, former Broncos position coach Brandon Staley spent a year as the first year DC in Los Angeles with the Rams. Then the next year jumped up to take a head coaching job with the chargers. So, I mean, at this point, anything is possible. People have done it before, but for me, I imagine that ever will maybe have to coach another one year, another season as a DC, I think to really get that strong serious consideration, even though he has interviewed with various teams for their open head coaching jobs as well. So that is something to keep an eye on. All right. Well, we talked about it a little bit, or you mentioned that Sean Sean Payton was probably the favorite on paper there. And of course, I'm sure Broncos country would love to have Sean Payton be the next head coach. But who do you think will be the next Denver Broncos head coach, Cody? This is a tough one, Kim. This is tough. You know, for me, I I don't necessarily have a preference. I've always been on the record of saying I think that all the candidates that the Broncos have had interest in their head coaching job, to me, I felt like 
I think I'd be okay with any any one of them. I think it was a strong, it's a strong class there. For me, I think it is ultimately going to be Sean Payton. And it's not just me who thinks that. NFL insiders Tom Pelissero believes the same exact thing alongside Mike Garofolo from people yeah. that they've talked to. Peter Schrager. Denver right now seems like the one job. Now, a lot of people have mentioned the Arizona Cardinals job. Well, the Arizona Cardinals just hired a general manager the other day. And so ideally for a guy like Sean Payton, the appeal for Arizona for him, he does like Kyler Murray. But at the time, they didn't have a general manager position, which means if you jump in as the head coach and you have some authoritative say, like we see guys like Bill Belichick have around the National Football League, that might make Arizona more appealing for a guy like Sean Payton. However, that's not the case at this point in time. Denver can, I think, substantially pay Sean Payton more ultimately, and I think that's where things are going to boil down. Now, at the end of the day, let's say Sean Payton's like, "Ah, you know what, I'm not feeling any of these positions, any of these you know, areas to go to. I'm going to wait another year. He can certainly do that. He has all the authority to do right. just that. So uh, for me personally, I think, it, I think it will be Sean Payton. If I had to go with a wild card, I would say D'Amico Ryans. Okay. D'Amico Ryans is a guy that has gotten a lot of buzz around league circles, obviously with his former experience as a player. He's got one of the NFL's top defenses right now. He's a great leader, can command a team. He would be a first-year head coach, though. I would not be surprised if D'Amico Ryans is, uh, you know, makes a very strong case for the Broncos. All righty, exciting things. Okay, what do you think about this one? Are the Broncos as far off from getting back to the postseason as so many seem to suggest? I know there's obviously a lot of outside factors that can play into the answer of this question, especially the head coach question mark there. But right now, where it stands, what do you think about this one, Cody? You know, I, I honestly don't think that they're – too far off as, as most people seem to throw out there. You know, for Denver, obviously five and twelve is not going to get it done. They, this past season was a massive letdown from expectation standpoint. But uh, we've seen it. Like I think the biggest issue with Denver this past year, I think injuries were one of them. I also think coaching, especially in the offensive side of the ball, was really one of the bigger issues that they had had this year. We've seen that Denver can compete with Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. They just have to find ways to finish. We see that they can compete with the Las Vegas Raiders. They can compete with the Los Angeles Chargers. It's all about finding ways to finish against teams like that. And simply Denver could not get that done this year. Um, So I think that the fact that they can compete, I think, gives you – yeah, absolutely. Because if you can compete and you can win some of these games, you win the division. Absolutely. You're in the playoffs if you win the division. So – I don't think that Denver's path to getting back is as hard. I think if you look at teams that didn't make the playoffs this year, I think Denver's probably got the best chance of getting to the playoffs next year. There's a lot that goes into it. And as we've seen this weekend in Super Wild Card Week and this past week, Kim, coaching matters. And that's why Denver is in the position that they're in. They're looking for a new head coach because of that very reason. Sure. And it's easy to think about this last season as a whole being very disappointing and underwhelming. But if you think about just the last two games – that the Denver Broncos played. There's definitely some hope and some glimmer there. Cody, you and I talked about that last week. So I agree with you. I don't think they're as far off as some may say. Now, I don't mind that some people are saying they're far away from the postseason because I do believe that there was so much hype around this team in the last offseason that probably hurt them. So I don't mind that. I don't mind people thinking that. It's totally fine. Uh, We're not going to have a repeat offseason like we did last last year there. But I agree with you. I think um, there's probably a little bit more hope than – most people do assume, but um, again, I'm not going to say any more than that. We're going to wrap this one up with this last question here. We'll talk about free agency that, of course, kicks off March 15th, honestly, right around the corner. I know it's two months, but it's probably going to be here in two seconds. Who are the top two free agents that Denver should bring back, in your opinion? This is tough because Denver's got a lot of guys who are set to hit the free agency market. 17 unrestricted free agents to be exact. I've actually written about this at milehighsports.com. If you want to go check it out, all the unrestricted free agents, go to milehighsports.com. Click on the Broncos tab and you'll find the article there. You can get all the recap and insight on that. Um, For me, I feel like Draymond Jones obviously has to be one of your top priorities defensively, right? Six and a half sacks this past season. He played in 13 games. I think the the one area where the Broncos probably have leverage is the amount of games that Draymond has missed throughout his career. He has he has dealt with some injuries that have impacted him. He's one of their tougher defensive linemen who's played through a lot of injuries. Honestly, he's played through some injuries he probably should have sat out from. So I think that that's kind of that fair balance in terms of, you know, hey, I did this. I played through this just to try to, you know, it, it, you're trying to get a contract. And Draymond, I think one thing that you look at with him, this past season was his first year as a full-time starter. And he had six and a half sacks. He had 16 pressures. Draymond, since he's been in the league, has been a consistent pressure creator on the defensive interior. I mean, I think everyone gets so focused on 
pressure. I mean, I sack, sack, sacks. We ignore pressures. Pressures are important, and Draymond was a key piece of the Broncos' defense this season. Now, if they placed the franchise tag on him, it would cost the Broncos around $19.7 million, which ideally I don't think that they want to pay that. So I imagine they'll be in touch with Draymond's agents. They'll look to work on a deal. I imagine it could be a three-year deal. Um, I'm not sure exactly the ballpark of that. There's different websites that have different estimated annual values for maybe what Draymond would command on the free agency market in comparison to other players who play his position. For me, Draymond is, I think, priority number one. I could even say like a 1B would be Alex Singleton, who was signed a one-year deal with the Broncos in free agency last year, coming over from Philadelphia, was the Eagles' leading tackler, I think, in consecutive years there. And for the Broncos this year, guess what? He was the leading tackler, a guy who impacted everything on defense. He had two performances this year against L.A. teams, one against the Chargers where he had 21 tackles, and he had a game against the, the Rams on Christmas Day, which we'd all like to forget that he had 20 tackles in that game. I mean, anywhere the football goes, Alex Singleton is there. I think he's very dynamic. He plays with his hair on fire, and he's also got a lot of good leadership qualities that you know he and Josie Jewell alongside one another I think make a very dynamic duo, not to mention the impact he has on special teams. So uh, for me, I think that Alex Singleton and Draymond Jones are the top two guys that I think the Broncos have to take a look at bringing back this upcoming season. All right, Cody. Well, as always, we thank you for all the content that you're bringing in this offseason. I know you said it's really not an offseason for you ever, and I completely understand that, especially with the next couple of months getting going. Of course, free agency, the combine, the draft, new head coaching. Um, it's going to be interesting there for sure. Now, do you guys have a press conference for the Denver Broncos organization? Have they already planned one? Are they kind of waiting for the head coaching? What's next for you guys and the team? Yeah, they, they don't have anything planned yet. I mean, okay. usually once a decision is made, they'll plan it something 24 to 48 hours afterwards. Okay. Um, so nothing officially planned right now, but my guess, like I said, I imagine we'll probably hear something Monday, wow. um, all things considered. And then I think Tuesday or Wednesday, an introductory press conference, if that timeline does match up to what I think it'll be. Awesome. Well, I hope it does so that we can talk about it in our AMA next Wednesday for right. sure. To everybody listening, make sure that you're following Cody on Twitter at Cody Rourke NFL. Make sure that you're staying tuned to milehighsports.com and also following us on Twitter at Mile High Sports because we will have all of the info and updates for you as we get them. Cody knows what he's talking about here and he's got a lot of content already up on milehighsports.com. So make sure you check that out and stay tuned for more. Cody, I will see you next Wednesday. Thanks, Kim. Appreciate you.